Hi, I'm Riley Olinger. And I'm Laurel Chet. And we're representing the state of Wisconsin with our project, Removal of Cyanobacterial Contaminants via Solar Power, uh, using electrocoagulation filtration and the optimization of pH on the process. Whether it be resulting from poverty or urbanization, about 783 million people worldwide don't have access to clean drinking water. Given this, it is only logical to say that we have a social responsibility to help out more developing countries on their quest to find this precious commodity. Nevertheless, more novel methods, such as electrocoagulation, are thankfully within our reach Electrocoagulation is a cost-effective water purification method that relies on a cathode and an anode that charges particulate matter in water. This causes these particles to become attracted to each other and coagulate, creating a flock. This flock is then floated to the top by hydrogen ions. In addition to electrocoagulation, we also use sand filtration, which is often very affordable in a lot of countries. Since solar power is more energy efficient and much better for the environment, we attempted to power the EC machine using this solar energy. But unfortunately, we had to resort to a 12-volt lead-acid battery for the actual testing of our experiment, seeing as the Wisconsin winter climate was not favorable for solar power. Our objectives were to determine the feasibility of solar-powered electrocoagulation on anabanum cyanobacteria, determine the effects of uh, pH on electrocoagulation, and then to determine the possibility of uh, sand filtration as a polishing step. One of our main hypotheses was that the optimal pH of electrocoagulation would be 2 due to the abundance of hydrogen ions to help with the flocculation process. In order to test solar capabilities, a solar panel was attached to a multimeter and readings were taken on the voltage that it was able to produce. In terms of testing electrocoagulation and sand filtration, we use cultured cyanobacteria and measured changes in turbidity and scanning spectrophotometer outputs before and after filtration was applied. The biggest highlight of our results would be that the greatest turbidity change occurred for a pH of 4, which was our control, and also the absorbance levels went down significantly. We found that solar power would be feasible, but just not in Wisconsin's winter weather. The optimal pH for EC would be at 4, Sand filtration would be just served as a polishing step to eliminate residual elements. And finally, these results are significant since it supports the use of a developing technology that is fairly novel. Thank you so much for listening, and we hope to see you soon.